It's always kind of nice when Bob Hope comes to Los Angeles for one of his recent stopovers, because we usually get him on the show. Uh, he moves more than anybody in show business. You think you travel? Uh, Bob will be at the Pan American Arena in Lo uh, Las Cruces, New Mexico, for a scholarship benefit. And this Sunday, December the 15th, his Christmas special will be on NBC at 9, following uh, Bing Crosby. And in between jobs, he's managed to, to get a book published called The Last Christmas Show. Would you welcome Mr. Bob Hope? Sugar? Uh, I, don't, I don't really what it is that, that, that there is. You no, know, you have all my sponsors there. <laughs> that audience is so nice. They're still applauding my monologue when you walk out. <laughs> Sensational. It's How funny. You You're so loyal. You're wearing your Christmas tie already, huh? That's right. I've got Isn't my, that nice? my tie for the network. Very beautiful. You look very sharp tonight. I'd never said a thing like that to you. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't say you're. F How many flies do you have? <laughs> with your wife back there, you know? She's so amazed. She didn't know that. She said she prepares your clothes and you only have one. I'm not going to pass any remark on that. <laughs> I you know, it actually that happened out. to me at a command performance. I don't know what I told you. Did this, you do that? I was at a command performance with the Laurence Olivier and the British stars in 1947 at the Odeon Theater in Leicester Square. And after the show, we went downstairs into the lounge waiting for the king and queen, you know? The, you know, the late king and queen. And we're standing there and saying, how did we do, you know, at the, at the show and everything. And I got, I got tails on. And uh, there's a, a Mo Montgomery, Robert Montgomery, Loretta Young, <laughs> Alexis Smith, Craig Stevens. And all the British stars at the other side. And all at once they said, here they are. See, so we all straighten up like this, you know, so, so, so. We're all straight. And Olivier is right across him and he went. <laughs> And the king and queen are right here. <laughs> For a moment, I thought that was part Murder. of. I thought that was protocol. Maybe you who know. I've never, never met the no, king and queen. I, I wouldn't want to get those kind of laughs. You know. <laughs> You know, there was, a, uh, there was a leader in Flushing at the RKO house. That, there was a stock thing with him. You know how the first show? Right. And when I was there, I was showing my act. And this cat used to do it to everybody. You'd get out there and you'd say, hey, a funny thing happened to me. And he'd go, shh. <laughs> Break up your routine and walk back and go. And everything was cool. Just everybody. And start from there, you know? Yeah. Have you traveled more this year than, than, than last year? I really have. Oh, I got a, I got a line there. for you. Yeah. I was in Hayes, Kansas. You know where that is? Well, I... Hayes, Kansas is where the University of Kansas has a branch. It's like Santa Barbara here for you. you know, right. University of Kansas. I, I rehearsed the show, and uh, I said, where's the best place to eat? And the guy said, Dave's Steakhouse. So I went down there, and it was one of those restaurants when you're in there, man, you're wide open. There's no booths or anything, and you're sitting right in there, and you're a target, you know. Somebody didn't like the show, they could stab you right there and, you know, who would talk in haze? But uh, finally, after signing a few autographs, the waitress, I was just about to leave, she said, you have to say hello to the cook. And I said, I only play the big room. She said, no. <laughs> but you have to because he owns the place, that's Dave. So on the way out, I opened the door, I said, hey, goodbye, y'all. And he rushed up to me with an with a apron on and a, and a T-shirt, you know, with a menu on it and the whole thing. <laughs> and he said, hey, bye. when you get back to Johnny Carson's show, you tell him it's so windy here in Hayes, Kansas, that we have white caps in the toilet. <laughs> Never thought I'd hear the day when Dave would be the hit of the show. <laughs> Do a monologue out here, nothing. Dave from the steakhouse. <coughs> I went to the auditorium, and you know that was a pretty big laugh, and even in Hayes Candy. <laughs> Dave, no, it was great. Dave have, must have writers in the back room there. The writing. things you hear. Do you, you get that? Do you get that they throw jokes at you every place? Yeah. They do at me, you know. I, down in Texas, you know, they get the Aggies, which are right. the, really the of Texas, the Aggies. <laughs> <laughs> One guy said, you know how the Aggies would have handled Watergate? I said, no. He said, the same way. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> okay, you and Earl Butts are gonna do it again, yeah. huh? Uh, Isn't he beautiful, Earl yeah. Butts? They're fitting him for a lightning rod now. You know. <laughs> You know, the Earl knew he was in trouble when they summoned to him to the White House and he saw a black smoke coming out of the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, that's what he, he used to be Secretary of Agriculture, now he's a pillar of salt. But we don't mind that, do we? <laughs> All right. How about the book here? The Last Christmas Show. Is it the, Do you this... have a book, too? Yeah. What is this, book night? Yeah. Did he have he's a book, too? That's a beautiful album, thing yeah. you did there. It sounded like Forest Lawn when you did that whole <laughs> <laughs> it was beautiful, beautiful. I loved it until he came to that part with a gal with a thing on her back. Yeah, and I thought it was Wilbur Mills' life. <laughs> it's pretty. It was pretty. We have to take a short break here, then we'll come back and. Uh, All right. We'll do well, we got some outtakes from your special. I, I understand. Got a few uh, things. I got a few things that you will not see tomorrow. And I'm using this audience for the monologue. So did they tell him? Oh, you got a monologue. great don't, night. Don't go away. Don't go away. You I got a you. wonderful night for it. I need to. I could do my monologue. <laughs> Are they great out there? Oh, you love them. Super, super. <laughs> Couldn't have picked a better night, Bob. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll take a short break. We'll be right back. <laughs> um, this is not just about the last Christmas show you did overseas, but this is the whole story of about the last 30 years, isn't it, of entertaining uh, mm -hmm. servicemen all over the world. Should be fascinating. Yeah. The last Christmas show. And this will be one of the few years that uh, yeah. you're going to be uh, here it's in this country five, for Christmas. five languages already. And they, Is that and right? They, and they translated it into English right after I finished it. <laughs> <laughs> I copied a few of the one-liners you use now in the book in 1950. Oh. 20, 24 years ago. Whew. See how they work here. Would you rather have Ed read it? I heard this your mom. <laughs> But seriously, folks. <laughs> but, uh, but I want to tell you. Uh, but I want to tell you. <laughs> Bobo Christmas tour in 1950, talking about Les Brown's band. We had a little trouble with the band. While the medics were giving us shots for the trip, they kept going back for seconds. One, two, two three, four. <laughs> we had to bring the band back to Tokyo. It was time for their annual bath. <laughs> Look, folks, I'm these are 24 years. These, these are 24 years. <laughs> these are 24 years ago. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Did you, did you, how do you manage to remember? Do you, do you, uh, do you ever keep a diary? Well, uh, Pete Martin, you know, uh, went around and talked to about 40 people. Everybody right. went on the trip, and then he came back to me, and we sat in front of a mic, and he, he threw all these questions at me. And, of course, we, the thing writes itself, you know, because we, we have so many notes, and Betty Lanigan and Bill Faith, and all the people who were with us, they, they remember different incidents, and then we patch it all together. And it's, it's, was there any one of the trips that was uh, any more memorable than... Yeah, I think other. so. I think the one we did with England and North Africa in 43, because we experienced uh, something that I wasn't looking for, and that was a lot of bombing, you know, <laughs> where uh, I dove into the ditch ahead of Langford and things like that, some, uh, <laughs> some hero other heroic adventures, you know? <laughs> but uh, we were bombed in Bizzardi, and we were bombed in Palermo, and it's in the book. I tried to get under the bed. I didn't know whether to get to between the spring or the mattress or... <laughs> Oh, because they were bombing, Daddy, and I was just laying there saying my whole life passed before me. And uh, actually, it was my lunch, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, it was something else. And uh, um, Ike, we saw Ike uh, the day, the next, a couple of days later in Algiers, he said, uh, I understand you've been in a couple of bombings. I said, yeah, it's not my racket. He said, but don't worry about it here. He said, hell, we haven't had a bombing here for four months, you know. And that night, about 3 o'clock, wow, wow, I got up and Pepper's knocking on my door. I said, hey, get Francis Langford. This is it. And I got up. We went down to the wine cellar of the Letty Hotel, which they were using for a bomb shelter. And I'm sitting there, you know, with no seatbelt, just sitting there. And they're going boom, 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 boom. And Stubby K walked into the room, which made the whole thing. We didn't even know he was in the country, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are you doing here? Well, I'm with the unit, too. <laughs> Uh, where do you sit? Right there, buddy. And the whole thing, oh, how did you bump it, you bump? And the thing finished after about an hour and a half, you know, it was all clear, and we went upstairs, and Quentin Reynolds, we'd met them the day before, and Clark Lee and H.R. Knickerbocker and Steinbeck went to their room to talk about the thing. They never got out of bed. They slept through the whole thing. I said, wait a minute. You don't get up for a bombing? He said, what's the difference? If you're going to die, die in bed. <laughs> 
So I'll know if we ever now have another war. That's the, <laughs> st stay in your Sealy. Of course not. Of course, a wine cellar isn't a bad place to be during a bombing either. No, not at all, because the whole hotel lands on you like that. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> And at the undertakers, they slip you under the door, you know. <laughs> Number five. <laughs> they mail you home. Well, we'll take a short break, then we're going to have some outtakes. Here's the Sunbeam Shave Master, Shaver, and Groomer. <laughs> <laughs> 